There we go. Come and on. Goodbye. Yes. Is back in business. Yes, back in business. All right. All right. Just don't touch things. <laughs> there it goes again. No. <laughs> Just click on the game. Just click Just on the click game. Click on the game. Okay. Clicking on the game, but it's in the way. Ah. Uh, uh... All right. Is that box in your way? It is. All right. Just click OK and come back to it. Okay. Wait. Hit OK. If I hit OK, will it be OK? <laughs> All right. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. All right, yay, we did it. Let's get started. People All have right. been waiting. Let's get started. I'm sorry. We've been having a late late start. We will uh, we'll make it up, right, Coach Blake? Four hours right now. Okay. Let's go. All right, so here in Majestic Chest, we have a cloud of fog, Coach Blake, that we cannot get through. The only thing that's it's available... The fog of war, sir. Oh, the fog okay. Of war. Okay. A nerd language, right? <laughs> um, so here is our tower. Let's go to the tower here. What do we got to do? All right. Um, let's see here. So Majestic Chest has a little story to it. And what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to ignore the story. We're just going to kind of go through this a little bit faster here for our new friends to chess. Okay. Um, all right. So it looks like we got this place, Coach Blake, and we got this place, the church. Uh, oh, where do you want to go? Okay. Where would you like to go? Man, church comes first. Let's okay. do church. All right, let's go to this place. Run like the wind. <laughs> I'll see. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to move the straight moving pieces. Okay, my new chess friends and families that's watching. Let's take a look. Okay. All right, Coach Blake, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the rook. Uh, are you familiar with how to move the rook? Not at all. Teach me, oh great teacher of teachers. Oh gosh, they're gonna be like this tonight. All right, <laughs> up, down, left, and right. <laughs> That's how you move a rook. Okay. Look at that. There he goes. The only thing that that we know need to know here is the squares that the the rook is moving to. So, um, what we have is the rook has moved over to the left and he is actually on a different square so at the bottom you're gonna see a b c d e f and g h you notice that and then one two three four five six seven eight so this rook has moved to the square b one two three four and five so far so good yeah. so far so good it's good to me all right cool let's move on all right so he can go in any direction that he wants to, up, down, left, and right, but he just can't run into his own pieces. Got it? Can he eat the queen? There's no queen. All right. But if it's being blocked where he wants to go, if he wants to go to that square C5, there's an enemy rook there, so you can take it. Pretty simple. You just gotta move his rook and take it. This is called the captain. Coach Santos, what? I have a serious question. Serious question, go. Can the white rook go past the black rook to either b5 or a5? No, you cannot jump over pieces. You just have to take that one rook that's in his way right now on c5. Got okay, it? so you can only go as far as you are blocked or where you can take. True. True. Got it. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we take. And in chess, the x means that it has been a capture or a take. Got it? All right, moving on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, more serious question. It says, Japan Andre, where is A5? A5 is right here. That's the square A5. All right. So rooks are always at the corners of the board when you're playing chess and setting it up for the very first time. Got it, Coach Blake? 
Cool. Let's go. Okay, another straight moving piece that we need to know is the bishop. The bishop goes in diagonals, all right? There he is, diagonals. Got it? This bishop is on a dark square diagonal, so he has to stay on the dark squares. He can't go to the light squares for any reason. Moving on. Okay, so the bishop has moved in a diagonal. Coach Blake, to what square? C7. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Very, very wrong. Let's learn our <laughs> alphabet, shall we? Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F1. Now we're going to go up. So that's going to be F2. Do you get that? Oh. Okay. Read a chess book. Read a chess book. All right. <laughs> So just like what we were doing with the other, with the rook, the bishop can't run into its own pieces. Okay, he can only go in the straight lines that he, diagonals that he's supposed to be going into. Can't jump over any of his pieces. All right, unless it's a rook. Okay. Oh, Japan Andre says that he could go to Z16. There's no Z16. Um, on this chessboard. Imagine if you had a 26 by 26 chessboard. That's loco. Okay, so if you, have, uh, <laughs> your bishop can run into that rook. Give me that square that 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 black rook is on. Chaponte Andre, what's that square? No, I want you, man. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I'm here for you, Coach Blake, and our viewers here for the very first time playing chess. Ah, uh, okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Okay. So, G7. Very good. So, when I'm moving, it's going to be Bishop, capital B for Bishop. He's going to capture, that's the X, G7. Got it? Cool. Cool. Let's move on. All right. Bishops are going to be on the C1 square, F1 square for white. C8 for black and F8 for uh, his other bishop. All right. So you're telling me that every chessboard has two bishops and each bishop is a different color? You have a light square and a dark square one. Got it? Oh, okay. Uh, some people want to say, like, oh, my chessboard's like green and white. We call it dark squares and chess. Got it? Oh. Okay. Well, Mr. PC over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now <laughs> we got our, our queen, and our queen has the powers of a rook and of a bishop. You got it? Yes. Cool. So she can go, like, in any direction that she wants. This is what makes the queen that very, very valuable to chess players. Because she has cool moves, man. All right. Can she move like a knight? No, she cannot move like a knight. Just straight moving pieces we've been talking about. Got it? The knight does not move in a straight line. It makes it an L shape. We'll talk about him later. Okay, so queen goes up to... Uh, what square is that? D7. D7. Cool deal. Let's move on. Alright, let's see here. So, that queen wants to capture that rook, but what square is that rook on? The you sunk my battleship square. B3. B3, very good. <laughs> I'm like, battleship square. All right, capital Q for queen captures B3. Got it? All right, so if you have a white queen, it's going to go on the center square that's white. If you have a black queen, she's going to go on the dark square that's just for that queen. The king is going to have to go I to the opposite. I we were calling them, what if they have well, white pieces and blue pieces? Light squares and dark squares. That's, I guess, the easiest way to remember that, too. Got it? Queen on her color. Very good. That's another chess rule. All right, so the king is also a straight moving piece, but he can go in any direction that he wants to. As long as, you know, he has a legal move, he can do that. He moves in a box. Okay. 
Um, I want to make sure that chess players remember this too, that the K is for the king. And I know that knight also starts with the letter K. So the next letter over is N. So not to get you confused, what is a knight and what is a king? And so the knight is going to be a capital N and the king is going to be a capital K. Cool, let's move Okay. On. Okay, moving on. So king, queen are going to look just like this. The rooks are going to be, and the bishops are going to be just like this. So the only thing that we're missing on the back row for white and for black is the knight. Okay, but that's the end of all of the straight moving pieces in chess. Got it? Cool. Cool, let's move on. Ooh, cool. As soon as we got done with this, we have another castle over here. Are you ready to go to that castle or are you ready to go to this one? Mm, I don't remember what the, the Geomancer is. This let's one? check that out. Right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The giant crystal. Okay, I learned the basics of the chessboard. Cool, let's do it. All right. So, chessboard, this is for your, you're going to have a quiz, man. All right? What? Sorry. No. Sorry. No. I need you to remember this because I'm getting old and I'm forgetting things. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that old, I guess, but. All right, chessboard to have 64 squares. Eight rows, eight columns. Dark squares and light squares. That's eight times eight. That's true. Um, so half of the chessboard. And we got 16 pieces for white, excuse me, and 16 pieces for black. Okay. How many pieces are on the chessboard, Mr. Moore? 32. 32, very good. Which is half of 64, which is also two to the fifth power. <laughs> Okay. Logic this. All right, Mr. Moore. When you're playing, <laughs> okay. When you're playing chess, people get chessboards set up wrong, but you will always get this right if you can remember this. The white square is always on the right hand side. So take your right hand, okay, and then you point to the square that's at that corner on your right hand side. That should be the white square. Please, please, tournament players, make sure light square in the right-hand corner. Whether you're playing black or white, you will get it correct every time if you do that. Yes. Okay, so this is what I always run into uh, as a coach. I, I see chess players setting up a chess board incorrectly, just like today, and I have to fuss at somebody. I'm um, saying, hey, make sure you set up that board correctly, otherwise you're playing sideways backwards looking chest okay so from the, the letter a to the letter h that we have this we call this a rank got it this is the first rank all right mm -hmm. and then from a1 to a8 this is called a file okay so we have an a file b file c d e f g and h this is the chess language that I really hope that you can remember. All right, Coach Blake? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go on. Okay, so just like we did, we kind of played a little bit of Battleship. If you played Battleship before, then this is uh, pretty easy to go. So that square, what color is that green? I mean, what, what's the name of that green square? A B. A threat. Bit threat. Yeah. Very good. By the way, one blessed mama says you're not that old. Oh, man. Okay. Thank you very much. That was a very nice comment. Um, <laughs> all right. We also have diagonals. And I'll be talking about diagonals later in our chess lesson. From A1 to H8. This is a long diagonal. You got it, coach? Yep. And also one thing, too. Diagonals cannot switch colors. Right. This is a very short diagonal from A2 to B1. This is the shorter, the shortest one that we have. Okay. We're done with that. And we have uncovered more. So now we got some huts over here and we got a castle over here. What are we going to tackle next? 
Uh, let us be thorough and let us hit the huts. Let's hit the huts. Okay. All right. And so. No. Oh, fine. Let's I'm, do it. I'm going to give you a quiz now, and we have to ha answer six questions, and we get a reward. We get pawns for our chessboard. Got it? How do I use a pawn? All right. Here we go. How many squares? Fine. Are there along the fifth rank? Let's see. So there were ranks and files. Mm -hmm. Ranks are numbers. Files are letters. So the number would be eight. Eight. Got it. That's one. All ranks consist of eight squares. All rows consist of eight squares. Got it. All right. Coach yes. Blake, what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to find that the only square that's both on the A one to A. H8 diagonal, okay, and the Ooh. A3 C1 diagonal. What is that one square that I've hit two times? Oh, uh, it's not the battleship square. B2. B2. Fantastico. Look at my cool sword. You see that? All right, never mind. Shing, shing, shing. All right. The hey, wait. I have a sword. You got a ginormous sword. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, I'm not going to ask where that came from. <laughs> All right. The Renaissance Festival, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Help me out here. The H1 square must always be a lighter color than A1. True or false? True or false? You know the thing where it's both a T and an F? One of those. It's true. All right, come on. Let's, we gotta go through this a little faster. All right, true. True, very good. It's that one, H1. The light Yay. square on the right hand side. Okay, cool. Let's go on. All right, click on only one square that's along the only diagonal that includes the H8 square. F6. F6. Awesome. Very good. We're almost done. We got to go to the next one here. I'm high. File. That's a file. There you go. Cool, man. Cool. Got it. I think this is our last question. How many squares are there on a diagonal? Um, well, we have a two on a short and an eight on a long. So it depends. That's right. It depends. Cool deal. Because you're right. That's right. We got a long diagonal. We got a short diagonal. Cool. We got two pawns for our army. All right. Yay. All right. I exercised the ghost. Man, he must be pumping iron right now. What? Okay. We're gonna. I'm not gonna. <laughs> you're weird tonight. Let's go to, the, to this castle <laughs> here. All right. Take a quiz Fire. on the straight moving pieces only. All right, straight moving pieces, and we get a rook for our army. Got it? Another quiz. Another quiz. We can do this. Okay, let's do this fast. It's fast. How many moves does it take for the rook to get to this square, E7? Dose. Two. Very good. We're going to run into a, rook, a knight, and then we're going to go to E7. One, two. Cool. All right. How many moves does it take to get a rook to E7? So, last time we could take the piece, and that made it easy for two. But this time we can't take the two bishops. So we have to go one to c8, two to c6, okay. three to e6, and then four to e7. All right, very good. Two, three, four. All right. I think it would have been easy just to move the bishop. Okay. <laughs> Which bishop attacks more squares, Mr. Moore? Ooh, we're going to have to do some counting. Yay, math. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. B2. Okay, the B2 bishop. Cool. There's a sword again. Hooray. Sorry, Japante Andre. You were the weakest link in today's night, on tonight's show. 
<laughs> How many right. moves does it take to get the rook to e7 here? Dose. Dose. Okay, no pieces in our way this time. One, two. Cool. How many moves will it take the rook to go from d8 to d1? For real? So, I have nothing blocking it, and I have nothing that I need to take to get there. Okay. So, it's only one move. Only one move. Here we go. Bam. Alright, which queen attacks more squares, Coach Blake? Let's see, the queen on A1 has the A file in one rank, so that gives her 14. The queen on D5 has the D file in five rank, in addition to two diagonals, so it has to be the queen on D5. Queen on so D5. So black queen. Right. There... Or, to be a PC, the dark queen. The dark queen, very good. Okay, so... <laughs> Remember this. If you have a queen in the center of the board, you're going to have more squares to go to. Got it? That's why we want to centralize our queen. Victory is ours. Yay! Okay. We got it. And now we're going to go back to our tower. All right. So we, are, we have a battle, Coach Blake. We're going to get <gasps> a... King and a pawn. Let's do it. All right. If we win, we get gold. Let me switch this to. I like gold. Let me switch this to two D. That's easier for our eyes. Yay. Okay. All right. All you gotta do. You don't even have to checkmate this guy. Right, you gotta to just get your pieces uh, activated and capture that pawn, and we can win this. Super easy. Okay. Am I moving or are you moving? You're going to tell me the moves and I'm going to do this because you got to remember the coordinates. Okay. Move Rook from H1 to H8 check. Check him? Yep. Okay. Rook H7. Rook H7. Huh. Rook takes D7. Rook takes D7. Very good. Okay, that's it. That's all we had to do. Every move is forced. Every move is yeah. forced. That was that was logic right there. Logic power. <laughs> Fist bump logic it. Logic power. Fist bump it. Now, don't make it weird. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. We got a new place to go to. <gasps> Ooh. Many things. I believe that this is the knight and the pawns. Let's get these guys out of the way. All right. Japonte Andre, here's your knight. Okay. And shining armor. All right. So, the knight and the pawn are very different guys. All right. So, let's <laughs> do the knight first. Okay. Here's our knight. And uh, he has a knight wheel. Can you see the wheel? That is a circle, sir. A circle, okay. Wheels have spokes. Sure. Well, if I do the arrow thing, you can see it, right? The yes. knight will always move in an L shape. Got it? Show me this L shape, please. Okay, this L shape thing looks like one, two, and then turn. Watch. All right. So the knight is surrounded. Got it? He's the only piece uh -huh. that can actually jump over stuff. This is why I like using my knight. All right, so you can jump over by doing the one, two, and turn. Let's remember this important rule in chess here and that we cannot use the capital K for, because that's for king. We can use the capital N for knight. Got it? Nifty. Oh, man. You got dad jokes you want to, you want to do a dad joke? Is that what you want to do? Oh, <laughs> he's about to like, Japonte Andre, don't do it. Yeah, he he wants to get idea. in a dad joke war. All right, come on. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, so the knight cannot jump on his own pieces. All right, he can jump on other pieces and squash them. Got it, Coach Blake? Yep. All right, squash. There you go. Coach Blake, capital N for knight. X for captures. 
F6. Got it? Okay. All right, cool. All right, the knights are right between the rooks and the bishops. On the B file and the G file. Yeah. All right. Cool. Hey, new friends. We're glad that you made it tonight. Send us a hey, what's up? Hello, hello. All right. Um. Well, this is a pawn, Coach Blake. Uh, duh. Um, hey, it's so small. He's so small and wimpy. But wait, if you got eight of them, they're very powerful. Coach Blake, did you okay. know that eight pawns could take down a queen? I did not know that. Have you ever that tried is super that? cool. You ever tried that? Ooh. It's a fun game. Queens are crafty, though. Uh, I've done it with my with my uh, my students before too. One queen versus eight pawns. See who can win. Cool. Okay. So, pawns on their very first turn can move one square or two squares. Got it? Yes, but never, never to, backwards. Never backwards, never to the left, never to the right, so always straight. Got it? Okay. So, I like to move my pawn two squares in the very, very, very beginning of chess. Well, at least either the D pawn or the E pawn. This is the D pawn going for two squares. So all I have to write is not P for pawn. All I have to write down is just the square that it goes to. You got that? Yep, Japan right. DeAndre. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, oh yes. They can move in little diagonals. Look at this. All right, so if our little pawn is running into an enemy pawn, he can't go forward and take, but he can go to the diagonals, all right, to take. Like that or that. So be precise here. Pawns move forward, but they take diagonally. Forward diagonal. Got it? All right, cool. Let's move. So that pawn decides to take on C5. So all you got to write down is the D pawn X, that square, C5. You don't have to put if it's a rook or a bishop or a knight. You just need to write it down like that. Got it? Got okay. it. So pawns can get like frozen is what I tell my students. So they can't go anywhere. They're, 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 they're locked. And if they're just standing there and there's no other pawn in between them. All right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So each side starts with pawns like this too in front of their pieces. Now, On the second and the seventh rank. Yes. Um, uh, two... One of the things that I do as a coach is I like to uh, teach my students about Pawn Wars. Pawn Wars is um, a game that I'm just using with just pawns, and the black and white pawns like this. And you're trying to get a pawn to the other side of the board. All right. If you're trying to get a pawn to the other side of the board, you make a, and you get a queen, you win the game. Have you done cool. Pawn Wars Let's before? I have. Okay. But we got to show it to him if we're going to talk about it. All right. All right. Now we got our full cool. army. Cool. Yay! All right. Oh, look at this. It looks like a sphinx. It's a Jose. It's a Jose. Boys, you ugly. All right. Take a quiz. <laughs> All right, Coach Blake. Here we go again. How many legal moves can the pawn make on E4? Let's see. Pawns cannot move backwards. They cannot move side to side. So that takes away three spaces. They can not move forward when blocked, so that takes away the fourth space. They can move diagonally, but only forward when they're taking, so that means they have two more spaces taken away, so that means they only have two legal moves. Two. Very good. Either that way or that way. Okay. Remember, he can't take the pawn in front of him because he's frozen. He's blocked. So. He can't just let it go. No, he cannot. He cannot let it go. All right. You want to start the dad joke wars? All right, come on, man. Uh, how many legal moves can this pawn make? We just covered this. So the last one only had two because there were pieces it could take diagonally. But with its little T-Rex arms, it has nothing that it can take. And all, six, all the other six positions cannot be occupied by the pawn. So it has none. None. 
Okay, so the knight likes to jump around. <laughs> Who, what? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna do my dinosaur rar. Rar, there you go. <laughs> oh man, H1. H1, he oh, wants to get the after how many times That's a take? toughie, that's a toughie. How many, how many okay. do you need to make to get there? So, Coach Santos, will you move the mouth, or not the mouth, the mouse cursor to E4 where the knight is? Okay, he's right here. Okay, I want to move in the L shape. So go down two spaces for the big part of the L, and then right. So that's one L. Okay. So right two, and down one. Got it. Got it. So that's two L shapes. Okay. So that's two moves. Two moves. There we go. That way and that way works too. Got it. There's more than one way to. Well, I can't say that. Move the knight. <laughs> okay. E easy question. Is he really trapped? <sighs> if I look at my fancy circle, he can move to these squares C3, D2, F2, G3, G5, F6, D6, and C5. Because the L shape allows me to move outside of the box, so that is false that he is trapped. False, he's trapped, that's right. All right. Yes, I'm uh, representing the chess bras tonight. I'm on the team, I guess. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> that'd be cool. If Eric Hansen actually like says, hey, do some uh, chess coaching for my young guys. I'll be happy to do that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Something happened. Okay, here we go. If the knight makes eight moves in a row, Coach Blake, what color is he going to end up on? Now, I like this because this is a good logic puzzle. Oh, okay. Program. So, let me ask you this, Coach Santos. Mm. Does the knight stay on the same color after one move, or does it go to a different color mm. on its next? He's always going to alternate. From a light square to a dark uh -huh. square, or from a dark square to a light square. So, so your this place. is super interesting. The bishops always stay on the light squares or the dark squares, but the knights always switch. Mm -hmm. So... If the first move is to a dark square, then the second move it has to move to a light square. The pattern is 2D. So if we take that 2D pattern and multiply it by 4, it's always going to end up on the light square in 8 moves. There you go. Very good. Okay. How many legal moves can the E4 or the highlighted pawn make? So, this pawn cannot move backwards, cannot move side to side, so that takes away three spots. It can't move into the back diagonals, so that takes away another two. There are only three spots left. It can't take its own piece, so that takes one away. The space in front of it is open, so it can take that one, and the little T-Rex arm on the left, he can take that, so that makes two legal moves. <laughs> there you go. I did, I did it for you guys, all right? The T-Rex. All right, going on. Yes, we did it. <laughs> Yay! Okay, cool. Well, we got an army now. We have, down here at the bottom, we have two pawns. We have one knight and one rook. Let's go back to the tower. Let's go beat up on this guy again. All right, so... Three-headed giant, sir. A three-headed giant, and he wants a shrubbery. Okay, yeah, you know he wants a beating. That's what he wants. All right. <laughs> okay, just like we did in the last one, uh, what we're gonna do is we are gonna use our knight and our king, and we're going to uh, tackle that pawn. Okay. So all that we got to do is just get rid of that pawn, and then we win the game. We don't have to checkmate him. There's no way to checkmate with only just a king and a knight. I want to be clear about that with my young students. If, you, if that happens with you, then it's just a draw. But black has a okay. chance of making that pawn into a queen, and we don't want that. So, let's eliminate him. Elimination to M. Okay. Okay. Knight F3. Knight to F3. All right. Like that. Yes, sir. Okay. 
I want to point out to you, Coach Blake, that your knight is covering that important square that that little pawn needs. Yes, he is. So, King D2. King D2. Excellent move, because what I want to do is I want to stop that pawn from charging forward and to get to that queening square. This is his queening square. So he's coming down the board and I'm coming up the board. All right? Okay, King D3. King D3, let's go after that pawn. Knight D4. Knight D4. That would put that king in check. Okay, he goes up one, two, and to the right. So that king's in danger, he's got to move. Knight B5. Knight to B5, that's an interesting move. That pawn is going to have to move, or not. Knight takes D6. Knight takes D6, he has no way to make a queen and win this game. We have got a draw, very good. We captured them all. Hooray, victory is ours, is what it says. Ooh, look, not gonna lie. Play. I just thought about doing the Pokemon theme song. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what do we got over here? Let's go take a look. Ooh, that would be called um. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> okay. Check. I mean, there's a name for that. And stalemate. Let's do uh, this. Uh, uh, uh. Let's do this, little, and then we will be done for the night, okay? We'll do part two oh, okay. on another day. Are you ready? Let's do it! Okay, let's do it. Take a tutorial on check, checkmate and stalemate. Here we go. Okay, if a piece can capture an opposing king, the king is in check. So we see right now that this rook has laser beams <laughs> uh, pointing at the king. This king is in danger. So he's got to do take, run, or block, okay? So mm. there's no way that this king can jump down to E2 and take that rook. He's got to run. And he has you going to run, boy. He's going to run. Make him you run. You run. All right. So he's got some different directions as long as he's not running into the rook's laser beam. Got it? Should we talk about the take, run, block now or should we wait? Take, run, or block. I think that will be in it too, in this tutorial. Okay, so this is the running part. He's gotta get out of it. All right, so he can also block if he has a rook. That means he's just gonna put his rook in front of his king to stop the check. Got it? It's like a shield. Ching. Ching, and then our last move is that he can do is again, Capture or takes. Oh, that would be awful. And people would laugh at you. You do not want to do that. All right. So, this is checkmate, Coach Blake. All right? This is for all my beginners out there. And what we're, this is what we're trying to achieve. Where the Black King cannot move to any of those squares because he would be captured by either a rook or a king. Now, rooks, I'm sorry, kings can never leave the chessboard. All right, Coach Blake, I always see that in young chess players, they'll take another person's king and that's illegal. You cannot take it, but instead this is checkmate, okay? So, Japan de Andre, don't be a Rieger. All right, let's go on. Here, right here, white, Checkmates black. By no, moving. not checkmates. That's a checkmate. If is it white to move or black to move? If it's white to move. Okay. Okay, but if it's black to move, you're right. This is a stalemate if it's black to move. So that's why we're always looking for checks first. Okay? You're gonna hear me say this again and again. Checks always come first. Got it? Got it. Okay. And this is one of those checkmates that I call helper checkmates. Okay, Coach Blake? We're going to use the king. Helper checkmate. Helper checkmate. Helper checkmate, people. Okay? Let's remember that. That we want to use our king and our queen together 
as often as we can so we can do checkmates. This is a very important checkmate that we will revisit again and again in future lessons. Okay, but if it's black to move, that's right, Coach Blake, it is a stalemate. Got it? So why do they call it a stalemate? Because it stinks. <laughs> Bad joke. All right, go on. All right, let's move. Come on. There he goes. Ooh. Ooh. A magic hut. It's pretty. Pretty. All right. Here we go. Take a quiz on the basics. All right, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We answer six questions and we get a bishop. Hooray! I need another one for my army. Yay! All right, which king is checking the opposing king? Oh, goodness. Kings cannot touch other kings. Irrigor. This is very illegal. Okay? Kings can never touch. They need belly space. All right? Between these kings. <laughs> Come on. You never heard of belly space? For real? That sounds like a dad joke thing. It, it's dad joke, okay? <laughs> dad bod never touch. All right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Kings can never check another king. All right? Oh my gosh. Next. All right. All right. Next. Next. Okay. The Black King is in check or is he in checkmate, Coach Blake? So, he can either run, block, or capture. Take if he runs, block. he is in danger from the White King and the, well, the Light King and the Light Rook. If he, he has nothing that he can block with and he has nothing that he can take the Rook with, therefore, he is in checkmate. It's a checkmate. Yes, it is checkmate. Cool deal. Take runner block. Ooh. So, what is the correct term for this? Besides block. Intermission, so I can go get popcorn. Intermission. <laughs> Not <laughs> intermission. No, we can eliminate that guy. Interposing. Interposing. Very good. You do also. Um, SAT vocabulary, don't you? I do, yeah. Cool That's deal. part of it. Cool Interposing deal. means to place in between. To place in between. Thank you, sir, for clarifying that for our young viewers. Okay, on the board, let's make the only legal move that gets us out of check. Because right now, this rook has laser beams coming down on our white king. Hmm. So, h5 is out because that's being attacked by the rook. g5 is out because that's being controlled by the black king. g4 is out by the black king. h3 is out because of the black rook. Therefore, g3 is the only space g3. for the king to move out of its box. Hooray, we did it. Okay. Can the white bishop actually move to e2 to check this king we should always check the king right coach santos yes you always want to check the king but is it possible right now <sighs> well is that black rook gonna hurt the king if i move the bishop can i say hi oh yeah can i give it candy that would uh put your king in check so this oh is, then i can't do that this is illegal Illegal moves. Aww. All right. Is it checkmate if it is Black's turn to play? So if it's Black's turn to play, mm -hmm. is it in check? No. No. So if it's not in check, then it's not in checkmate either. Mm -hmm. You want me to put So it? no. No. All right. It's a draw. You get half the point. Cool. I actually was doing this to students today and they couldn't figure out, man, why am I getting this wrong? Because <laughs> you gotta like, go after the king with checks. Okay, victory is ours. Wonderful. Yay. Right. Back to the tower. We can do this. All right, all we gotta do. Oh, we're gonna get some gold, Coach Blake, if we beat this guy again. The tricephalic gargantuan. 
All right, this time we got a bishop. Okay. All we got to do is just take that miserable pawn, and then we win. Bishop f3. No, I'm sorry. That's silly. Bishop h3. Bishop h3. Okay, you really want to go after that pawn right now, don't you? He moved. He moved. <gasps> Bishop e6. He's moving again. King d2. King d2. Get in front of that pawn. Very good. King d3. King d3. Oh no. King takes d4. King takes d4. Very good. We did it. Hooray. We got more gold. Cool, dude. Oh man. More places to go. More places Is to go. Is that wonky? There's what? The gate by the by the thing. Are we good to meet the Loch Ness monster? Oh man, we gotta to. Uh, I think we gotta save this for next time. You know what? I think you're right. We are <laughs> out of time for tonight. We've been streaming for a good hour or so, I think. About an hour. Okay. So let's let's uh, tell everybody again what we have covered. Okay, wrap it all up. Um, we have done. We talked about the chessboard. We talked about the straight moving pieces. We talked about the weird moving pieces, the bish I'm sorry, the, the knight and the pawn, the weird guys. We talked about check and checkmate and stalemate. Those five things in this mini lesson. All right. That's a lot of stuff, Ghost Santos. That's a lot. If you need to uh, revisit this, um, revisit this, uh, we are going to put this up on YouTube, right? Coach Blake? Yeah. Okay. We're going to make some edits on it, and uh, we're going to, to finish. And we'll come back next week. Are you good for next week, too? Yeah, yeah. All right, and then we'll do uh, part two on this episode that we have. We'll use our pieces and uh, continue to build our chess army. Sound good to you? I like armies. I like building stuff. Let's go whoop somebody. Cool, man. Hey, thanks Coach Blake for doing this with me. Um, thank you everybody that came out and was talking to us in the chat tonight. And uh, man, I love doing this. I love doing this. <laughs> oh goodness. So many cool things to do. So little time. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Say goodbye, Coach Blake. <laughs> Wait, are you still there? <laughs> I'm still here. Okay. All right. We're done. You ended it? Are we ending it? Yes, we're ending it. It's over. That's it for the evening. Good night, everybody. Say good night, Coach Blake. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> you don't need caffeine. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good night.